These three great Pyrenees are with us today thanks to nonprofit organizations staffed solely by volunteers. The majority of the Great Pyrenees rescued come from the southern part of the United States. The dogs sent to the northwest come from Texas. Most of them are abandoned orphans that are put in city and county shelters and given only a few days to live. If it were not for volunteers that provide a temporary home and necessary vet care, they would have been killed. Sadly, not all the dogs in shelters can be saved as there's not enough foster homes available. I'd like to introduce you to foster families and individuals that will share their fostering experiences. As a result of their generous hearts, they have literally saved Great Pyrenees lives. I'm Janice Walker. And I'm Ed Walker. We enjoy owning and fostering animals as they come through the uh, Great Pyrenees Rescue Society system or Saving Peers in Need. Or NGPR National Great Pyrenees Rescue. They're, it's such a neat group of people and we love these dogs. I thought the same thing, everybody thinks this, everybody, that how can I ever let go of the dog? So magnificent is this, even if it's not really, you know, mine, I wasn't necessarily looking for a dog, but I'm giving this dog a temporary home. And I guess um, I thought that, and so I just kind of let it pass, and I didn't think very much about it. And then I had an email one day from Terry, and she um, she asked me if I'd be willing to foster because they had a dog that, that needed a situation like my dog Max could give. He's such a big, calm dog. Um, we call him Uncle Max when he's with the fosters because he really is just kind of this big dog who likes to be around other dogs. He loves people most of all. But um, I don't know. I think it got me thinking about it when she said that and then the timing was right. And I emailed and said, yeah, I'll do it. The first foster that we had was a puppy. She was five months old. She needed an environment with a big, calm dog like Max. And she, um, she was great. And the family that adopted her was so wonderful. It's like, I was hooked. It was after that, it was this total feel-good experience where you just, you meet them, you meet their dog, and you see the puppy with them. So I, that was how I started to foster. And it was, at, at that point, it was kind of a one-time thing. Um, but after I adopted her, I was like, there's no way I could not do this again. For the Smith family, this is Soli, and uh, we uh, we got Soli from the Pyrenees Rescue, luckily here, and uh, she's been an amazing dog for our family. She came to us a little bit under the weather. first got her, we were fostering her. I didn't know if it would be a forever thing. It was just to give her energy and a good space to heal in. And this little house felt like the perfect place for her to, to be. And then she doubled. I mean, she was 40 pounds when we got her. She's 82 pounds. Go back. Really quite the story. We are the Zemmeyer family. We were going to just foster because we thought it would be a great experience for the family to have a dog around, but we didn't know that we were ready to make that commitment to have a full-time dog. What's, what's it going to do to our life? How's it going to impact us? I was pretty apprehensive uh, at first about, you know, taking a dog that we didn't really know the history on or had maybe had a um, a bit of a checkered past, and um, and she's been great. I mean, she's been an awesome, awesome addition to the family. There was an application on her, and I emailed my husband, and I was crying, and I said, I'm, I can't let her go, and he said, then we're gonna adopt. Mello is now a healthy 95 pounds, and we've helped with five other, five other fosters. At this point, we're just happy to help out the dogs because they have such horrible stories and um, it's a great experience for the kids. It's a lot of responsibility, like, you know, walking her and feeding her and making sure that she's happy. We had a puppy, our very first one after Mello was Puppy Jaeger. 
He was this tiny little underfed, just skinny puppy. He quickly started gaining weight and just became a blob. Sure, you have to keep a closer eye on the puppies than you would on the older ones, but it's so worth it when you get them and they're scared and they just look at you with those big brown eyes and they just want love. And when they leave and they jump in their new owner's car and they're so excited, you know you've done a really great thing. We have our forever dog, but we've also been able to help other dogs find their forever homes. And it's heart-wrenching to say goodbye. But we know that we have Mel's and she's happy and we want other dogs to be happy. And so we will continue to help as many dogs as we possibly can. We encourage people to become fosters, and if you can take take one into your home forever, you won't regret it. Penny Stewart is another amazing foster in Mountain Home, Idaho. She's been fostering these two great Pyrenees along with 14 other dogs. Oh, terrified, absolutely. And she, all she would do is lay in her pen and pee all over herself. She didn't eat for several days. Um, so that's why I, mean, you know, I took her out took her to foster her, and once she got out of there, she she got a lot better. I've got 14 more dogs at home. So everything from a, an epileptic chihuahua up to a, an old arthritic St. Bernard. <laughs> Our local shelter does everything they can to place the dogs. We're just a small group. Margo and Snow begin their new life. Next, I'd like to tell you about Natalie Wolf. She contributed the following foster stories I'll be sharing. Her partner, Chris Garvey, has been of steadfast support to Natalie in these dogs' journeys. Walker was Natalie's first foster. He was hit by a car and required femoral head surgery. Thereafter, he was adopted and now living in a wonderful home. Fisher, affectionately called the Pier Pony, came to Natalie at the age of seven. While many of the dogs that come into rescue are neglected, mistreated, starving, and strays, Fisher was none of these things. His adopted family was dealing with unexpected circumstances and knew it was in his best interest to find him the care he deserved. Natalie provided that care until he was adopted by a family in Seattle. Fisher also has a Pier sister that was fostered by Janice Walker. Geezer was pulled out of a kill shelter in Texas at 10 years of age. She made her way to Natalie's care where she found the comfort and love she so deserved. However, she collapsed within the week and did not recover. Chris and Natalie saw her through the end, offering her overwhelming love and compassion in her last moments. Grace was originally purchased from a breeder in Texas as a puppy. As is often the case with peers that end up in rescue, she was left outside during the day. Her owner worked long hours, and as peers, especially young, bored peers, will do, she barked a lot. Realizing he couldn't properly care for her, her owner gave her to rescue. Grace was then adopted to a family in the Northwest, and she quickly showed them who was in charge. She was. She was again returned to the rescue at one and a half years of age. She had a sweet, happy demeanor and a zest for life that easily hid a bite history and an attitude problem. Grace barked at everything, chased the cats, airplanes, ignored every attempt to call her into the house, and wasn't afraid to show her dislike for rules with a growl or snarl. For these reasons, Grace was placed with Natalie, a dog trainer. 
Natalie provided the structure Grace had been lacking. They took basic manners classes, practiced riding in the car, walking on a leash, coming when called. They even got up early to avoid the dreaded garbage trucks and practiced walking past dogs without reactivity. Yet, for Grace, every day was the absolute best day. She just loved being alive. Natalie realized Grace was special, yet needing a very committed home. Many people applied to adopt her, but after talking to Natalie, everyone chose to adopt a different dog. Her bite history made her risky. She just wasn't predictable, and no one was willing to take the chance. Grace had been with Natalie and Chris for over six months when they finally realized she had found her home. They knew the challenges, risks, and the incredible rewards. They also knew in their hearts that if they let her go and there was a problem, that Grace's life would likely be at risk. They couldn't live with that. So with Natalie and Chris, she has stayed. Lastly, I'd like you to meet Richard Atwood. Fosters are huge, whether it's one foster or two fosters, whether it's one time or if you do it for years. Once you fall in love with the breed, they've got you. They've got your heart. They get over here and you see 20, 25 dogs come off the transport. And you look at them and you realize if it wasn't for all of the fosters, the majority of those dogs would have been put to sleep. And then the incredible dogs that they become just after being in a foster home for a short time. And the amount of people that want to adopt one that give them the best home they've ever had. So fostering is huge. It's a commitment, but you treat them like your own dog. You fall in love with everyone. You cry when they leave. It's very rewarding. Ah.